груши Поплыли туманы над рекой Выходила на берег Катюша На высокий берег на крутой Выходила на берег Катюша На высокий берег на крутой Выходила, песню заводила Про Степного Сизова Орла Grammet Suppressor attaches to NM9130 model Mosin. There is no need for the sniper Mosins to be put on. It could be a regular Mosin. Now, that being said, these suppressors were designed to fit mostly sniper Mosins. In the early 30s, Soviets started working on the suppressor and this just shows you how their sniper program really was advanced. They started fielding the Bramet suppressors in the early uh, 40s and you may ask why you need the suppressor on the sniper rifle. Well, here's the short demonstration what's happening. First, you can watch I am within a 10 yards from the camera. I have no vegetation, no nothing. Just listen to the sound when I'm shooting at the target, which is at 250 yards. And I'm using here a supersonic ammo, not the subsonic ammo. So it's clear to see that it is extremely hard to locate where the source of the shot is coming from. So it is not about that Hollywood quiet thing, but really what the suppressor is doing to is distort, distorting the sound enough that it is hard to pinpoint. Let me jump back to the view from just behind the target. Again, this is from 250 yards. Listen to the camera. As you can see, it's impossible to pinpoint where this shot is coming from. And this is, again, this was a supersonic ammo. I do have, I did in the past, the subsonic ammo for the 7.62x54R. Uh, I know the formula, what the Soviets used specifically for the Bramit suppressor, uh, but I didn't have a time uh, this to, to manufacture for this video. Uh, that being said, the company which is making those Bramit suppressors right now in the USA, they are working on the subsonic ammo that, that ammo should be available shortly. Now, the original Bramit suppressor, of course, cannot be imported to United States. This is where the MG Arms is stepping in and they make the perfect clone. Now, that being said, the perfect clone for the outside parts, it attaches the same way as the original Bramit. So basically, no threading required, right? We are touching it like a bayonet and the suppressor body. And then you got like a main body and the cap have the left-handed threads, markings, everything is the same. Now, the original Bramit was based on the rubber wipes. And the problem with rubber wipes, after around 50 shots, they were wearing out and you have to replace them. Now we are in the 21st century and the MG Arms put the baffles. So you can you, these buffers are working perfectly fine. The, the suppressor really is delivering uh, on that front. And also, original Bramit was rated only basically for the subsonic ammo. With this suppressor, you can use both supersonic and subsonic ammo. What is the impact of attaching that can on the Mosin like this? So you have to remember, Every time when you're going to hang a chunk of weight at the end of the barrel, your point of impact most likely will change. And here we got around 18 inches shift. So when you put that can and shoot the same ammo, supersonic ammo, you will dip down by 18 inches. So you have to re-zero your rifle. 
and in my eyes basically when you will put that can uh, it's hard to remember that you have to do the 18 inches holdover at the 100 yards and that of course will be multiplied more down range you go so Very either nice have scope. a double dope for your scopes or just zero to the suppressor and run it uh, suppressed as far as the original markings they copied mg arms copied the markings from the subsonic ammo for the dope on that suppressor so you got the markings all uh, right right here on the suppressor can that's i thought that's that's really really cool so we know we have 18 inches shift in point of impact but as i said no big deal just re-zero the rifle and enjoy all they can what else i can tell you is this going to affect the precision of your rifle well there you go here is the footage i'm shooting from the tripod sitting just front supported no support on the back at the 100 uh, yards and the rifle holds the same precision as without the can then of course you can take it uh, to the extended ranges and here i'm whacking the targets at 700 uh, yards and it was in a really really gusty winds up to 25 27 miles per hour so you know i'm a little bit spread on the plate but you got the message i mean you're going to keep ringing that plate uh, as long as you want to if you take care of the wind course so i did not notice any changes negative changes in the precision of uh, the rifle it is not going it shouldn't affect you at least from what i have seen running on this rifle and on my other pu sniper uh, rifles now the question is was it worth it to purchase this can absolutely in my eyes it was worth it and i will do it again it is absolutely cool to shoot the mosin right now because it takes that thunder crack right everyone who shot who shoots mosins you know you basically terrorizing the neighborhood <laughs> with the sound of the thunder so that's gone that curbs uh, even on the sub, uh, supersonic ammo absolutely doing the beautiful job and it helps with managing the recoil the recoil is a little bit delayed you feeling it differently it doesn't punish your arm like the regular motion can and i shoot mainly 174 grain ammo in this rifle and it is performing very very well and as i said you're not really feeling the beating uh, on the arm like uh, with the regular uh, motion without the can you would so it helps in that uh, department as well extremely happy and i will do it again that's it that's that's my feedback as a user now we know uh, interestingly enough that when the Soviets started fielding those cans, uh, some of them were captured by the Germans. And the Germans were so impressed with uh, those uh, suppressors that they made their own copy for the K98 uh, rifles. And going back to the MG arms, they did promise, I talked to them and they did promise to develop the copy of the German version uh, as well so we can have hopefully suppressed mausers i'll be watching mg arms very closely and uh, we'll see what's going to happen but uh, i'm absolutely thrilled by their approach and it wouldn't be possible to have that can in the us without them and finally someone step into the plate we talked about these cans long time ago go back in old videos when i did the episode about the snipers on the eastern front i did talk about the bramid suppressors and uh, i thought i'll never see them in the united states but here we are so big thumbs up uh, for the mg arms for what they did contact info and everything i'll post in the comments so the youtube won't spank me uh, for the video but it will be in the comments if you guys want to reach out to them uh, highly highly recommend it uh, as i said i'll do it again without blinking my eye i'll purchase this can again the one thing what i would say and we'll see i mean i'm not sure how much money they got the guys from mg arms have 
to make a different models. Well, this, if they could lighten up the body a little bit and maybe use today's modern uh, titanium for the can, that would be great. But of course, that would bump up the cost uh, higher. So I, I don't know if that's that's an option. Still, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, suppressor uh, it brings the history back alive so you guys uh, can have it share it and also again going back to it on the history line it shows you how advanced the sniper program and the whole thing on the soviet uh, side was it's it's really jaw-dropping that being said on the u.s side we tested the suppressors in the early 1940s as well but the recommendation from the board at that time was that it is not worth producing them at the large numbers and fielding soviets went the other the other way they filled the thousands of those uh, suppressors uh, to the regular army to the partisans uh, and to the to the of course snipers so they were used and uh, they were effective on the battlefield all right, that's it. We will be back to this beautiful PEM sniper and the Bramit suppressor in the episodes to come. So to keep watching and I'm probably going to shoot this rifle uh, in one of the vintage sniper matches uh, to put this uh, to test in the field. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching. Thanks for being with us. And as always, big thanks to our Patreons. Thank you guys uh, for helping us. And uh, we'll be coming back with more and more interesting videos. Bye!